Hello everybody and welcome back to lesson 19 test of validity. The content discovered in this lesson is face validity, content validity, construct validity and criterion validity. Let's start to discuss one by one. Let me first uh, describe what validity mean. Validity refers to the extent to which a test or instrument measures what it is supposed to measure or what it is intended to measure. Perfect validity indicates that an instrument accurately and completely assesses the construct it is designed to measure without any measurement error. So perfect validity indicates that if our validity is perfect, so it indicates that there is no measurement error or it precisely captures the intended construct without any distortion. It completely captures or measures the intended construct that we want to measure without any division. Let's take an example. Distance is measured by kilometer and mass is measured by kilogram. And kilometer is a valid measure for the distance, whereas kilometer is not a valid measure for mass. So to use or to measure distance, we have to use kilometer because this is a valid measure. To assess the validity of the measurement, we use one or more of the following approaches. The first one is face validity. Face validity is just the outer look of an instrument or the appearance of an instrument in measuring a particular concept. It is just an external appearance of an instrument. It is subjective and does not involve statistical or empirical analysis. So it is just an opinion or perceptions of the respondents on the instrument in measuring a particular concept. It is a relatively simple and quick method of evaluating an instrument's relevance or appropriateness. It is used as a preliminary assessment when we are developing an instrument measuring a construct. So it is used as a preliminary assessment in checking that instrument to measure a particular concept, but it is not sufficient to establish the overall validity. We can generalize that face validity is the weakest form of uh, validity measures. It does not provide a concrete evidence in measuring what it claims to measure. Let's look at one example. Uh, questioner to measure job satisfaction in workplace, the face validity would involve asking just experts or employees to review the questions and determine whether they seem relevant to uh, the concept of uh, job satisfaction measurement. If the questions, if the questions listed make sense in measuring the job satisfaction uh, by the respondents or by the employees, so the face validity is established. If they are not just uh, giving sense, so face validity is failed. Moving to the content validity, the content validity involves a systematic but subjective assessment of scale's ability to measure what it is supposed to measure, unlike that of the face validity. In the case of content validity, consulting a small sample of typical respondents or subject matter expert to pass judgment on a suitability or uh, an appropriateness of the items or the indicators chosen to represent the construct. Here, here we use subject matter experts just to judge or to assess their opinion on the instrument in measuring the uh, concept what is support to measure. Let's take a simple example. A skill designed to measure job satisfaction should include items on or questions on concept compensation working condition, communication, relationship with co-workers, supervisor style, empowerment, opportunity for advancement, etc. They are just all, they are the concepts trying to measure the job satisfaction. So the content validity assures all the major areas, all the major areas that are listed above are not missed to have the items when we are uh, preparing a measurement, uh, an instrument to measure job satisfaction, so we don't miss or we have to cover all aspects.
that is mentioned here. In general, it's not considered as an adequate measure of validity because still it is a subjective assessment. It doesn't have any, doesn't have any uh, statistical uh, scores or statistical uh, tests. Let's see the difference between uh, content validity and face validity. To start from the definition, the content validity measures the content compressiveness or the adequacy covered using the instrument, whereas the face validity asserts the surface appearance or the outer look of the instrument in measuring that particular concept. The evaluation method, the content validity is an in-depth analysis by the expert, whereas the face validity is superficial judgment by non-experts or maybe the respondents. The key purpose of content validity is it ensures the compressiveness or the adequacy of the measurement, whereas the face validity is just a quick initial check for the appearance of the instrument in measuring particular concept. In general, the content validity is somewhat deeper, whereas the face validity is shallower. So the face validity is the weakest type of validity in testing the validity. Proceeding to the construct validity, construct validity asks what the construct or concept or scale is measuring. In this case, understanding theoretical rationale underlying the measurement is very essential. This type of validity, that is construct validity, is an objective test because it is based on a numerical scores. We can use some softwares like AMOS to uh, get the scores of construct validity of how well the construct conforms with that of the theoretical expectations. The construct validity is subdivided into convergent validity and discriminant validity. Convergent validity is the extent to which construct is positively correlated with other measures of the same construct. Here, we are measuring the same construct. On the other hand, discriminant validity is the degree to which construct does not correlate with other measures that are different from it. Here, we expect low correlation or no correlation to justify discriminant validity. Let's look at an example for better understanding. Here, these are the service quality dimensions taken from Parasurmans. Under each of the five dimensions, there are items or questions to measure the dimensions. For example, if we are taking the reliability, there are five questions, responsiveness, four questions, and so on. So, if we are uh, correlating the questions under uh, reliability one with the others, for example, maintaining error-free records and providing service as promised, since they are measuring the same construct that is reliability, so we expect high correlation that justifies a convergent validity. Because they are measuring the same construct that is reliability, so we get we will get high correlation, that is convergent validity, which justifies convergent validity. But on the other hand, if we are taking the equations under reliability and the equations under responsiveness or assurance, so we get low correlation or no correlation because they are measuring different variables or they are measuring different measures. So that justifies discriminant validity. Moving to the criterion validity, criterion validity assesses whether a construct performs as expected relative to what? Relative to other variables identified as meaningful criteria. So here, an easy measure of criterion validity is comparing observed scores or measurement with a true measurement, or we can say a true scores. So here we do have a meaningful criteria to compare. Let's take an example. The theory suggests employees who are highly engaged would exhibit high job performance. So the correlation between measures of employee engagement and job performance should be positive and significant. If this is so, criterion validity has been established. 
for the construct because it is aligned with a predetermined criteria that is high engagement leads to high job performance so if the correlation between these two variables is positive and significant so we can say criterion validity has been established Criterion validity can be checked by two approaches that is concurrent validity and predictive validity. Let us see the difference between these two approaches. Concurrent validity, the scores of both variables are obtained at approximately the same time. Here in the concurrent validity, we are measuring or we are taking the measures at the same time and should be highly correlated. So concurrent validity is established. Unlike that of concurrent validity, the case of predictive validity, we assess the ability of a construct measures at specified time to predict another criteria at a future time. Here, we are taking a measures now to predict the future scores. So it must predict a future value of the dependent variable from the scores obtained on the construct being tested. Validity is established if the scores are highly correlated. Let's take one example for predictive validity. Assessing whether GMAT test is a valid predictor of performance in a business graduate school. So we are providing or we are taking a GMAT score for students who are the candidate for a master's students. So if the test of GMAT predicts the performance of the students, the performance of the students in the future, so predictive validity is ensured. If not, predictive validity cannot be established. Before ending our discussion, let me give you one case question and try to answer this uh, uh, question. Try to write on the comment box. This is the end of our discussion. Thank you for listening. Hopefully, we will meet with another discussion next time. Till then, have a good time. Bye.